In this video, it's time to do some light mods. Stay tuned. and or to the channel. Today we are going to do some light mods, not only on Silver Swine, but Champagne Bubbles. Champagne Bubbles really is the one that kind of disappoints me. Uh, they spend all the time and money on a two, uh, 2020 to put LEDs almost everywhere you could think of, except for the license plate light. The reason I usually put very bright white LED lights in my license plate is I want my license plate lit up, lit up very well. Uh, my wife and I like to do road trips. We like to go places. Sometimes we're out and it's nighttime. The last thing I want to do is get pulled over because they think my license plate light isn't lit up. Next thing you know, you're getting pulled over for no reason whatsoever. It's annoying. It's not that I'm doing anything illegal. It just gets to be tiresome. I've had it a couple of times when we've made trips out of state, especially out of state. It's really more of a pain because if you go out of state and you have a light out, you're a target right away. That out of state plate just screams free money because they don't know if you're ever going to go back there again. So you're a prime target. But today we're going to go ahead and take care of these. Uh, we're going to put uh, <coughs> two sets of LEDs in. Like I said, on this one and this one. The bulbs that we're gonna be using, we're gonna use a 168 on Champagne Bubbles. We're gonna use a 194 on Silver Swine. And the reason I'm gonna go with this, like I said, I want my license plate lights lit up very well. And this is a little bit brighter. The housing is a little bit more durable on trucks than they are cars. So you want to stick with the cooler bulb, one that won't generate as much heat. Now, yes, these are LEDs, so they don't generate much heat at all, but it's pretty much what's recommended. I want a little bit brighter on the truck because I just, I don't want to deal with the hassle. But what we're going to do is set up here. Uh, the truck has a little different process than the sole. We're going to go ahead and do the sole first because it's the easiest to do. There's a really simple way to change these out. And all you got to do is really pop open your tailgate and your lights are located right here and right here. These are your license plate lights. This is your backup camera. So you'll always want to make sure that your backup camera is clean, that it isn't scratched or marred, otherwise you're going to have a mark in it. And these will be our LEDs that we're putting in. I've used these before on other vehicles. I have them both on the two-wheel drive tank and on the Crimson 5.7. I believe I have them on the red sled as well. I like these. I have not had issues with these burning out at all. Now, with LEDs, there's a trick because there is a reverse polarity to them. So you have to pay attention when you're putting them in that you get them in the right orientation or they won't work. So what you're gonna do is grab the light, push it towards the camera and the opener. The opener is right here. It's kind of a touch pad style. So you're gonna push it towards and then pull it forward and it's gonna pop loose just like that. So now what we can do is we can twist it out of the housing A little bit more tricky to do it this way. There, twist out of the housing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let the door up for a bit. This is your light, and the trick is on the back side, there has these metal clips on either side. So, what you're doing when you slide this to one side is you're sliding it far enough one way that you can pull it up, and that's how you get these lights out. open my package right away <clears throat> and they used to put a slit in these in the back side I think they stopped doing that for security reasons probably um, so I just 
Take my pocket knife, remember to cut away from you, not towards you. What I do is just pick a hole down the middle, trying not to hit the LEDs, so I don't want to wreck them. If I get enough open, I can just stick a thumb in there and actually dig a hole in there. job when they glued this cover on. It's a little loose. I'm going to keep an eye on this one when I plug it in. If it doesn't work properly, I'm just going to probably return this kit. But I'm thinking it should work fine. It's just the cover that's a little loose. So what we're going to do is we want to make sure we get these license plate lights to light up. So I'm going to unplug my incandescent bulb right here. And if I have to, I'm going to start the vehicle. Better yet, I'll just turn the clearance lights on. That works even better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take the one that's covers rattling a little bit. <clears throat> I'll pull this down so you can see this in camera here. Okay, so what I need to do is just plug this in and see. Okay, so that's the way that it lights up. What I'm going to do is just stick it in there. So now this is done. It's nice and bright. And what I'll do is clip this back in and give it the quarter turn that it needs. Now this is locked in. It's not going anywhere. Now I can slide this up inside. Now for curiosity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and just close this. And I'm going to see if I can get us down Close enough. Okay, we can obviously see the difference between an LED and the incandescent. The incandescents are not very bright. There's a lot of LEDs up along the back here for the brake lights. When she uses her reverse lights and her turn signals, those look LED too. So this was the only piece that really wasn't LED and it just didn't fit the vehicle. So by switching this over, we're getting it to fit properly, look like it's supposed to. It's just a better looking fit. But we do have to switch that last one. We're gonna turn off the lights. We really don't want those on. Those incandescents get extremely warm. Like I said, this isn't something that the dealership that we bought it from is really guilty of. This is Kia themselves. They very easily could have put LEDs in here, but they didn't. So again, push towards, pop out, it'll fall. Then it's a quarter turn. And be careful with the quarter turn. You don't want to turn it the wrong way and snap this because you could break it. If you're curious, you, there, you could look here. Let me bring it in. You could look through and see the inside to figure out exactly where that quarter turn is. And that might only work with this one. It doesn't always work with every one that we do. Because sometimes you just can't see in there like we will on the truck. So there's our quarter turn. And that bulb is already really warm. That's just from being on that short time that we just did that. This bulb is, is fairly warm. When I pull this out, I don't want to set it in the interior. Uh, what I'm gonna actually do is take and set it over here on my grill, which I don't have to worry about starting my grill on fire. It's made of metal. So yes, obviously the goal of going with LEDs is you don't have the heat generated from it. 
That being said, if you live in winter climates and you get snow buildup, you don't have the heat to keep the lights from getting dirty. You may have to wipe underneath here to get those lights to light back up. Uh, I'm not too worried about that with this vehicle because uh, it gets parked inside during the winter time and I don't have to worry about it having issues with that. Okay, so now that we know the polarity is right, it lights up, we can now take our lens, quarter turn it back on. So now that that's on, we can slide this up back up into place. Like I said, they've, they've got it pretty well engineered to where, where you know where everything goes. And there is no really right and wrong way to plug these back in. They're all pretty much the same. So it's pretty much the same setup here. Now we've got our two LEDs. Close this up, and now we can see just how much brighter it is where that license plate would be. That's a dramatic difference, and once we have the plate on, it'll be much better. Now, obviously, I'm not going to put my plate on and show it on camera. Not going to do it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put the plate back on this one because this one's done, and then I'm gonna set up to do the Silver Swine. Now the Silver Swine is a little bit different setup. I'm gonna show you the right way and the wrong way to do it. There is a wrong way to do them on pickups. And the reason why is usually rust, although I don't have to worry about it on the Silver Swine, I'm still not gonna do it the wrong way. So let me get set up with that, I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're back here with the Silver Swine now. And the license plate lights, are located here and here. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to take the housings out on a truck. On a truck, you don't do that. The reason why is a lot of times the bumpers are rusty or the bolts, or in this case, screws, will have so much rust that if you try to take them off this way, what's gonna happen is you're gonna wind up snapping those screws or you'll break the housing itself. So on trucks, the trick is to go from underneath the bumper. That's why we got our trusty creeper down here. I'm just sitting on the stool to explain basically what we're gonna be doing here. So what we're gonna do is go from up underneath. We're gonna disconnect the light, pull the lights out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull both of them at this time because I don't want the bulbs to get warm. So I'm not gonna do one at a time. I'm just gonna pull them both. We'll turn the lights on, figure out the polarity, and then we'll get them plugged in. Again, same package, we're gonna open it the exact same way. What we're gonna do is run a split down the middle to avoid hitting the lights. And what I usually do is pick from the base of the package like this, pick kind of away, not towards my hand. And what this does is split the packaging. Then I just work my way up the packaging with my knife until I've cut a big enough hole that I can either stick my hand in there, stick a thumb or something in and break out the paper. I split it all the way up this time. I didn't do that last time. I just got it far enough to stick my thumb in and peeled it up. But like I said, they used to put a split in the back, but I think because of security reasons that most stores, they went away from that. These lids are a lot more secure. Uh, for some reason, the lids on, one of the lids on Champagne Bubbles, they didn't glue it down or something. But it's not gonna hurt anything. It's an LED, it's sealed. Uh, the way they design them, they're designed to do exactly what we're doing with them. So I'm not too concerned with it. All right, so what we're gonna do is crawl underneath, pull them out, <clears throat> and then disconnect the lights.
And like I said, what you're doing is you're going from up underneath because realistically, there is a lot of room underneath here to be able to get this wiring out of here. I mean, I've got, I've got you stuffed up by, by the spare tire and I have a lot of room up in here. Now, what you could do is if you want, you can disconnect your wiring and then twist this out. Now, this is gonna be another quarter turn. That's how these work, is a quarter turn, pull it out. If you have room in the wiring, you don't have to disconnect this. And sometimes I tell people, don't disconnect the wiring until you know how the wiring comes apart because some of them have tricky locks on them where you have to slide a lock down or you have to pick something out in order to be able to press this tab in. And if you do it wrong, you could break the tab, which means that the light will no longer function. Now, the reason that they probably went with a setup like this is they knew that the license plate lights would get warm and eventually it would burn the inside of the plug. And if it burns the inside of the plug, you have to replace it. And that's the other reason why I'm trying to get to this. I know this truck is fairly new because it just hasn't really had the miles been driven much. That by getting to this, we're kind of eliminating a lot of these potential problems right off the bat. You know, because when I start driving it, I'm going to be driving it a lot more. I'm going to be putting on a lot more time with the vehicle running. So my goal is to set this up for the future so I don't have to worry about it. So now that those pulled out, I'm going to set the bulbs in my toolbox. I carry spares. Now if I go on a trip or something, I bring my spares with just in case I blow one. I have something I can throw in. Again, turn on your clearance lights because LEDs do have a polarity to them. And if you mess up the polarity, let me see if I can show you. I didn't show you on champagne bubbles, but let me show you on this one. Okay, so it lit up on this. If you flip it the wrong way, like this, it's in there. I mean, I have it plugged in and it's not lit up because the LED has have a certain polarity to them. If you mess up that polarity, it won't light up. So that's why you always plug LEDs in with it turned on. That way you can know exactly what the polarity is and you'll know that it'll light up. I gotta move you a bit to do this one here. Okay. Yep, just like this. If I plug it in, the polarity is backwards. It won't light up. Flip the bulb, it lights up. Nice and bright. I mean, there's a lot of light up underneath here. These are the 194s. If you want to have a lot of light on your license plate, do use a 194 bulb. Don't use the 168s. The only reason I use the 168s is because that's what comes in the Kia Soul. It is a 2002. I don't really want to be goofing around with the lights and do something super weird to where it's going to cause issues. And I know it won't. But anytime you deal with warranties and you deal with new vehicles, you got to be careful what you do. And that's why with the... Crimson 5.7, I have to be careful what mods I do right now. I still have a warranty, I don't want to void that warranty. But there's certain mods I want, I want them done, I want them done now. So I am acknowledging that if there's something that goes wrong with that mod, the dealership's not covering it. So where we're at, now that we got all of our lights plugged in, it's, this will light up our license plate light, very nice. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna turn off the lights here in the garage so that you can see exactly how much light is given off by these LED bulbs. Make sure I get you at the right height here. And I don't want to get the tail lights in, so. Now this is with the new lights in. 
Now what this does is this really lights this up. I mean, I put my hand in there and I can see where my joints are for my fingers and everything. That's how much light is being given off by these LEDs. It is really, really, really a nice thing to have. Let me get this bad boy turned back on. So there you go. We did two light mods, two different vehicles, and it really didn't take us all that long. I mean, realistically, you can probably do this in less than 10 minutes. In fact, just doing the Silver Swine took me about eight minutes. Doesn't take very long to do, but it makes a big difference in how much light is given off. It makes a huge difference if you don't want to get pulled over. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. This is all we got for the light mods. We have other stuff coming, so stay tuned. We have a lot to go on the Crimson 5.7. And it will be coming back here really soon. In fact, this was the last mod I needed to do to get the Crimson 5.7 back in the garage. Tomorrow, I'm swapping this out. So, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.